Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. And today we're going to talk about how to understand what is going on in Afghanistan from a Korean perspective, and in particular from the Soul Light way of thinking about world affairs perspective. So, as you can guess, is this going to be about the Taliban? No. Is this going to be about women's rights? No. Is this going to be about Al-Qaeda? No. Is it about the troop pullout? No. Is it about Biden? Sort of. Is it about Bush? Yeah, sort of. Is it about Hunter Biden, the son? Yes. Is it about money? Yes. And specifically, minerals. And yes, looking at the world through the way the scams are run here in Korea really gives you a very sharp eye. Yes, it's a little bit sassy, but it is a very keen insight into how the rest of the world operates when you have that sort of playbook. So what is really going on? They went after the president's son. So daddy had to do something about it. So you know, Hunter Biden, okay, so maybe he has some issues with some mm, women and substances, but, and I'm not making excuses for him, and I'm not trying to be, you know, one-sided or the other, but where I do think he's more of just an unfortunate son of a political family is that at least from what I've seen is that the decisions that he makes seems to be more self-destructive and don't really start to cross into areas that start to damage other people and society specifically in order to fund his self-destruction or facilitate his self-destruction do we see uh, governments being taken down? Do we see decisions being made that are that is corrupting the rest of justice systems here and there? Are you know is are there cover ups here and there for other people? Where that maybe started to perhaps be shown is that did he deserve to be on that board of directors of some Ukrainian oil company and receive like $50,000 a month? Probably not. Maybe that's stretching it a bit, but was there some sort of corruption involved in that that really affected people? Who knows? It doesn't seem like it, but in any event, it seems as if the attacks on his son are relentless and that they're really trying to attack Joe Biden continuously through the son. And that is a classic playbook in the way Korean politics is done. So that's what, you know, really started to spark my mm, radar. Then what sparked my radar was a sudden policy move that seems to uh, not really make sense, but have some sort of plausible explanation. And seem to disadvantage a prior political dynasty that people have sort of forgotten about that then that political dynasty comes out of the woodwork and starts to talk. Example here, Bush. George Bush kind of coming out saying like, oh, we are so concerned about the women of Afghanistan, which is a very legitimate, legitimate, legitimate cause. But I don't think he's very concerned about the women of Afghanistan, i.e. look at all of the way that he has wronged women in the past, especially, let's just look at the state of Texas, okay, let's look at all of the uh, women that he has kind of like dumped on the sidelines, okay, that have had to go 
to um, clinics okay. He has had to come out and try to salvage something that is not necessarily the women, but something else underneath. And what has not been presented very clearly and publicly is the reason why we went into Afghanistan. Similarly, reason why we went into Vietnam. When people are still saying like, oh, the Vietnam War is so confusing. We don't even know why we went there. Yes, we do. If you really understand why we went there. Well, we don't really understand why we went to, you know, kind of like Afghanistan and even Iraq because, you know, Al Qaeda really, I mean, like Osama bin Laden wasn't really Iraq. Like what, what's going on? Yes, we do. It wasn't just because he was hiding out in Afghanistan. And it wasn't just oil. Long story short, Afghanistan is not just some podunk little place in the Middle East that is just sand and people who are backwards. Let's not let that kind of Hollywood biased discriminatory image paint that sort of picture. It is one of the most resource rich places in terms of minerals in the world. And you know, like all of our little smartphones, you know, all of the rare earth minerals, especially that need to be mined for us to continue our tech boom. Anywhere from estimates of about one to three trillion dollars worth of untapped minerals are still in Afghanistan. And the kicker is, is that it is a place where the minerals haven't really been able to really have been exploited over the 20th century. So the 21st century starting in 2001 and guess when we started to try when when 2001 is when we went in to Afghanistan and up until that point really you know most of the other places that um, had natural resources oil, rubber, sugar, fruit, anything the 20th century, like all of the colonial, western, corporate, all of the powers just kind of went in and started sucking it all out. But Afghanistan had its issues historically where the the powers weren't able to do it. And George Bush, though, he was able to start the infrastructure to get it started in 2000. One. So what I'm saying, let's just try to like fast forward to the end and then work way back there. What the theory is, because, you know, I don't have like national intelligence. I don't have like all that stuff. I just have the soul light Korean, you know, reading the political situation intelligence and seeing like, you know, what what people do when they, you know, attack each other through their sons and then how a daddy responds. You went after Hunter Biden so Joe Biden is saying like, I'm going to go after your kids inheritance. So the elder statesmen, the George Bushes, the Donald Rumsfelds, the Dick Cheney's, they're like 80 years old, right? They're the ones that set up this infrastructure of generational wealth that is pumping out all of these minerals from Afghanistan, they're going to give it to their children right through these lucrative contracts with the Afghan government, the Afghan government, which they pretty much control with the leadership and the political leaders that they implant, that they, they con essentially control as like puppets. And they maintain that by being able to create this ongoing, uh, you know, war on terror and continually fund a defense situation where they're able to have a military presence in the region. As long as you have your military presence in the region, you control that m mineral resource and then the contracts. And then you have that generational wealth of those deals and all of that rich minerals just going to the companies that are probably your sons and grandsons, right? But you go after, you go after my son. Well, what is daddy Biden going to do? Going to go after your sons and suddenly 
we're going to take out all the military from the United States and say, Afghanistan, it's time for you to fight on your own because you right wingers who have been attacking me and my side and bullying me for decades and I didn't even want to go along with this in the beginning 20 years ago. You bullied me into going along with the Iraq war. Well, I'm no longer going to be bullied. I'm 80 years old, man. Or he's Joe Biden, 78. And then even Donald Rumsfeld just died like two months ago. How long are you going to be bullied? Are you going to be bullied until the day you die? He's probably thinking that too. He's like, I don't want to be bullied anymore. So he's probably telling Dick Cheney, I don't want to be bullied anymore. I might be going to, you know, who knows? I might be going tomorrow. Do I want to be on my deathbed and say like, I've been bullied till the day I die? So he's probably like, I'm not going to be bullied anymore. And boom. So what happens when you take out the United States Army? Well, suddenly, if the Taliban comes in, all of those contracts are null and void. All of those contracts with their sons, grand, grandkids, the mining contracts, canceled, done, no more generational wealth, no more sh like all of the stuff coming into their bank accounts canceled what are they gonna do be like oh my god oh my god where's our money daddy and they're gonna have to explain to their kids when we're like daddy where's the money well, i'm sorry kids but you know <laughs> i couldn't bully biden anymore and he just cut it off and so i think that's what's essentially happening you know like you fight you fight and you attack each other through the kids and that i'm telling you no uh no better example of the way korean people fight so that my friends is kind of the battle i think what we're seeing here and if you want to understand what is going on in afghanistan you really all you need to do is just understand korean dramas this is why this is why Korean dramas, it's more than just entertainment. It is literally a lesson in international relations. I have an undergraduate degree from Stanford University in international relations, but I will tell you that Korean dramas and then mixing it with real Korean drama, there is no better education in the world so let's go into actual some facts and figures with afghanistan so in the beginning 19th century so like the 1800s and then the early 20th century it was britain so some people and when i say britain it's mainly like some people and companies from britain uh who went over to afghanistan and they got like the, it's like a lease or a license saying like, oh, this patch of land, Afghan government, just give me the exclusive rights. If I find something there, then I get the rights to mine it. I get most of the money and I'll give you like a fee, like a percentage of the profits. But you're not going to let anybody else touch this land, right? That's the deal. And so uh, the British did that for a lot of areas um, in that for oil and mining. And it was hit or miss. Like in some areas, they did do it and uh, were successful. And not in some areas, they weren't. And so like British Petroleum, the predecessors for a lot of uh, British Petroleum uh, affiliated companies uh, did that. But they weren't that successful i believe in afghanistan and then the afghan government offered it to i believe some american firms or people and many americans were like um looking at other places and they sort of turned it down which then they later regretted and then you throw in some world wars and people were distracted and suddenly you see in like the 1960s and 70s the soviet union has moved into that area and Afghanistan almost becomes like a vassal state of 
the Soviet Union. And then the Soviet Union is like, oh, this place actually is like, you know, they're assessing all of the minerals. They're like, oh, this. OK, once we figure out how to pump this place like this is valuable. And then the United States also is like, oh, wait a minute. We wow. We, we passed on this opportunity. No, we cannot let this go to the Soviet Union. And then so late 70s, the CIA really uh, was able to kick out the Soviet Union with that conflict. But it, it was still kind of like in this place where like the Americans really didn't have like good like control over the rights. And it really took until, ta-da, George Bush to kind of bring it home in 2001 and then with the installation of Hamid Karzai then in like around 2005 2006 they were able to like really formalize this law in Afghanistan saying like all the mineral rights are owned by the Afghanistan government which sounds good right it sounds like so nationalistic and pure and clean but essentially what that does is organize and almost create like a monopoly and really if there were private rights i don't know if there were private property rights then it was kind of like seized by the government i mean if you had some land if you had your own mine and then it was like seized by the government then and then the government gets to decide like oh we're gonna give this mining right to whoever we want and then essentially then they can give it to uh probably i mean i don't have the you know intelligence information but it probably is going to a george bush affiliated company and then that deal goes through and apparently it's like well the government must have a an appropriate cut but it's like five to ten percent okay that's like what your realtor makes if they like sell a house so that's all that the government is gonna get out of like you know all of these mines what kind of minerals okay i mean yes there is gold but please there is copper gold iron ore lead zinc lithium marble Precious and semi-precious stones, sulfur, talc, chromium, many other metals, natural gas, and petroleum. So it's like everything. One to three trillion dollars. I mean, I mean, that's a lot. And then once you get the natural resources, then of course that becomes the raw materials. And then like you think about you process that and then you turn it into a finished good, like put that into like an iPhone or you put it into something else like a car then you know you multiply the value of that natural resource boom that's trillions of more dollars you see it's money 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 and so now what Biden did <laughs> just cut that off I mean literally so he made a major daddy move because in my mind they went after his son one too many times and now he just lopped it off of all them sons over there i don't know who them sons are but it seems like he just decided boom we're cutting off your generational wealth how about that because look at this i mean seriously that is like a lot of that's a lot and when he was saying you know, after 20 years, I think it's time for the Afghans to fight on their own. No, I don't think he was really referring to the Afghans. I think he was really saying, look, if you want to mine in that country, then get it on your own. Like you can, you know? <laughs> basically it's really hard right it is super hard that's why you go through this whole process and it has a history this is the big hole that we've had in our u.s history in our american history in the textbooks because essentially the guy who 
has orchestrated all of this through the CIA, Alan Dulles. He was also on the board of Scholastic, you know, like those textbooks. So I'm sure he made it so that we didn't really learn all this stuff because I was part of that Scholastic Book of the Month Club and this book did not come on that monthly reader of the month thing. Essentially, what it is, is that the plantation economy did not die in the Civil War. It just got exported out to the rest of the world. And it looks like, again, daddies and sons, those plantation daddies, it seems as if made their sons marry up into like the East Coast elite try to marry into some of those rich girls, get their capital, and then start to export out this plantation-based mindset. So if you couldn't get the slaves in the United States, you don't think that these people just suddenly stopped wanting to try to make money that way, that big money. You don't separate a man from his wallet and suddenly they just stop, especially if it's big money like that. So when you saw what happened, they went just further south to like the Caribbean and then to Latin America and South America. So essentially like even the entire country of Guatemala was like owned by the United Fruit Company. Like that company essentially ran Guatemala late 19th century. So Civil War ended 1865. And then you see late 19th century, all of this American expansion where we are taking over other countries, enslaving other peoples and really creating what? Plantations that essentially the South is spreading South. And look, took over Hawaii, pineapples, sugar coming into America, Cuba, sugar. And then by the mid 19th, uh, the mid 20th century, that becomes like a haven, like a real pipeline for sugar. And then it becomes a place for gambling and then also money laundering until John F. Kennedy just messed it up. Yes, they on the surface blame Castro, but in private, they blame John F. Kennedy and look how he ended up. Yeah, so does this also ring true in Korea? Yes, with President Moon. He pulled one of these at the start of his administration recently after the President Park impeachment. There was a very suspicious, abrupt trip by former President Emil Bach to the United Arab Emirates. And it was a little bit weird. It's like, why is President Emil Bach suddenly going to the UAE? And one of his last big hurrahs as president, he was the president right before Pakane, was this huge, I believe it was like $40 billion deal with the UAE on some nuclear energy project. And you know, with those nuclear energy projects, those big deals, essentially there's probably a lot of padding and kind of like tucking away some extra money for uh, the people who sign, you know, involved. And so there's probably payment structures along the way, like it's probably not all the money at once. And so people are promised money along the way and probably, you know, you, 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 you get money, you know, into your back pocket along the way. And so... President Moon probably pulled a Biden and just cut that off somehow and a screwed over uh, President President Im Young Bak because in his position, just like President Biden, he was the number two for years. So these number twos, because they're always kind of like the guy like in the room, but they always have to be in the room after the number one leaves. So they get to see people's like 
happy face and then they get to see the double face they get to see also like what's being promised and then they also get to see what's actually delivered so these number twos if they actually are paying attention and they're not like the dummy number twos they can actually know how the game is played a lot better and if they stick around when they become number one they can actually just go like that and boom launch the quietest revenge and so i think that's what president moon probably did to president email buck with that uh deal he probably did something like that and just messed up his whole deal and so probably president email buck had to scuttle over to the uae to try to fix whatever uh was unraveled just like uh, President Biden probably just went like that. So I think that's just essentially what's going on if you want a very simple explanation of how to understand Afghanistan. You go after somebody's son, they're gonna go after your son. So we'll see you next time guys. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.